Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks for watching today. I wanted to do something. Um, part of it is to show you what I have, and the other part of it is to help me know what I still need to get rid of. <laughs> so I thought today that we would do a let me show you my collection type of video. Um, there are a lot of people who have a way ton more than I do, and that's okay. I want to have less than what I have. But part of that is uh, making better decisions and purchasing, being less impulsive, and then maybe waiting for some reviews and not being the first one all the time unless it really excites me and I need to have it. So thank you for watching. That's what we're going to do. Uh, before we get into it though, thank you so much for being subscribed. I really, really love um, every time I get a little notification of a new subscriber, I'm like, ah! Oh, thank you! And I get truly, truly delighted. So thank you for subscribing, thank you for watching, and let's jump into it. So this section of my collection is uh, lipsticks I don't use very often. Most of these in the center section here are more drugstore lipsticks. I do have a small selection right here of liquid lipsticks. Um, and they're the only ones that I use, but I use them so infrequently it almost doesn't really I don't know why I still have them. <laughs> um, I love this. This is the uh, Crayola and Clinique Chubby Crayon Box. I loved crayons as a kid. Crayola crayons were always my favorite. I wanted the biggest box I could possibly have. And the Chubby formula has been a favorite of mine for more than a decade. And so when they came out with this a couple years ago, I was like, I need it. And I keep forgetting that I have it because they're so comfortable and they're so beautiful and I can wear every single shade. All right. I do have uh, some unopened things in here. I have a Cheek to Cheek from Charlotte Tilbury. I have some Lipstick Queen lipsticks in here. Um, I also have my unused, I just put them in the Ziploc. Uh, there is one beauty blender and two blending sponges from Pure, which I kind of don't like, but they're here. And then over here I have my eyeshadow symbols. So if you look, so all of these are uh, ColourPop. This is their fourth. I got a backup and I haven't even opened it because I haven't finished the first one. Um, some of them uh, are brand new but are not living in boxes. There is a Kat Von D single here, a super, what was it? This is her uh, Thunderstruck Metal Crush eyeshadow. That was the only shade I truly loved. I really wanted to get into like these glitter shadows. I have a Stila one, I have a ColourPop one. This one I got from Cover Effects in a, a boxy charm. I just really don't reach for it. And then um, uh, liners, I should show you, liners, and then more liners down and through here. And then the rest of this are just random. Um, shadow singles. This is from Lancome. I have something from the drugstore. Um, and then I have like this one here from Surratt Beauty. So it, it runs the gamut of like expensive, inexpensive, all in here. And these are the things I don't use as regularly or are waiting to be opened. That's where they live. This box, by the way, totally empty. This originally, this piece of furniture originally had been to store my um, music in. <laughs> and as you can see, most of the drawers are full of music. Um, but the top four drawers, I decided to scrunch all the music together at the bottom and then use it to store some of my shadows. So in here, um, you know, it kind of runs the gamut. Uh, you've got some Wet n Wild. A couple of Visi Art palettes. This is this large white one down here is the large Jaclyn Hill. I've got a Natasha Denona, a couple of Lorac, a Tarte. Um, this is the Morphe Kathleen Lights collab. Uh, this is the Kristen Leanne Urban Decay, the colorful one, which I really, really like. So there is that. And then I have a couple of these from Bad Habit. I didn't really like those so much, but I'm still trying to see whether. If I leave them here, will I use them? So I gotta find a careful way to shove this all back together. This next drawer I think is a little bit easier to take a look at. I've got uh, two of the uh, Meat Matte Nude palettes, the Meat Matrimony and their original nude. I guess it's not the original, it's the, the matte nude, the first matte nude. I have the original Urban Decay Naked palette in here. Um, I've got Nude Dude. This one I like quite a lot because you have a little bit more plummy tones over here and more neutrally ones over here. I have always loved, this was my first palette from the Balm, 
and I love the shades in here. I think they perform really well. Of course, it can no longer use these guys. They are well past their expire, expiration date, so they just stay covered up. And then uh, I was a little disappointed with this. This is the Bling Boss palette from Morphe and Jaclyn Hill. The colors are pretty, but I don't like the way that they performed so much. And then in here, I have both of the Emily Noel, the Emily Edits, the large eyeshadow one, and then the face palette. This drawer, it's kind of random. I don't, I don't know why. They're, I think they fit in here because the sizes of the palettes fit together. I have the I Want Candy and Too Faced collab. Um, it performed better when I got it a year and a half ago. Uh, this came in a boxy charm. I don't think I'm going to keep it. It's not my favorite. Um, and then some other things in here that I truly, truly enjoy, like this Alamar. I should say Alamar. <laughs> because I do speak Spanish, um, but this one's beautiful. This is, um, what is this one called? Reina del Caribe. This one's really, really good. And this is another one that I got in a boxy charm. and this is the Soiree Diaries from Pure. This is really nice. It's a gorgeous neutral palette. Those are the two best shadows I've ever gotten um, from BoxyCharm, uh, my Modern Renaissance. It's not out on my counter because I don't use it as much as the other two Anastasia palettes that I have, just saying. Um, and then around here I have uh, three Juvia's Place palettes. Uh, I really, really think this one here is gorgeous. I love this one. The Nubian, of course, is the more neutral toned one. The Saharan 2. I like the colors in here too. They're very gorgeous. And I think this formula is fantastic. Um, I really did, you know, I got this one in a boxy charm too. This is a semi precious from ColourPop. It's all shimmer, so it's not as, um, it's more for pops, but I love the formula. And then I do have another collab in here. It's the Gwen Stefani Urban Decay. You know, if push comes to shove, I could wear just this palette forever because it's, you've got a lot of really light, neutrally tones. You've got some shimmery tones and then things to darken it up. I'm not a fan so much of these three down here, but everything else, I mean, I've used them, but they're not my favorite, but I love the packaging. I love that it's magnetic. I love how weighty it is. I think everything about this was just beautiful. So there's that. Oh. See, I have to be careful how I close these drawers here. And uh, the last one here, this is kind of like the last of my catch-all. Um, I have some single shadows that I've depotted. These were from Milani. Um, I have a bunch of those. A couple of depotted blushes from the Balm. These are, I think, are the in-stain ones. Yeah, this one is in Swiss Dot. So I have that in here. And then I have what I believe are mostly empty palettes. Oh no, look, some highlights and blushes. And I think these guys here, oh no, more highlights. These are uh, five pans uh, from Lancome. I've had those for a while. Could probably stand to get rid of those and what's in here. Oh, a lot of ones that I have deep potted. So it's time to kind of go through and edit this. This bottom drawer here is definitely my, you know, kind of like the last of the last. And it's probably really easy to go through and just say, that bottom drawer, most of those can go. But the top three are where I keep a lot of the palettes that I don't reach for every single day. This section here is um, a little bit different. I have this little divider. It, it has little handles so you can carry it like a basket, which I absolutely never do. It basically sits here dividing some of my most used products. Everything back here is gloss or like a glossy pencil. Um, these are my most used hourglass products in here. I love the Veil, like translucent setting powder is amazing. And I really do think that their blushes are very, very nice. So I have um, a full size, I have a mini, I have a blush palette, and then I have one of their ambient edit lighting palettes, which I really, I like. I didn't get any this year because I, this is last year's 2017s and I still have it. I've got all of my setting sprays here with the exception of this, which is a brush cleanser. Um, there's very little left in it. I think that for what it is, it works well, but it's too expensive. I would not repurchase that. That's the one from IT Cosmetics. And then I also have a, oh, wrong side. <laughs> all that flare for nothing. A fan that I use after I spray my face to set with. 
Um, these front two ones here have the majority of my Charlotte Tilbury makeup in it. Not all of it, but the stuff that I reach for on the regular. By the way, this right here, this is the contour wand. I have recently fallen in love with this and I think it's incredible, as well as the Magic Away Concealer. These are two of my favorite things, so they're always within reach here. Um, I have uh, several palettes over here, plus some other things. And in the back, just, you know, bronzers, blush, uh, bronzers, <laughs> things that I use more on the regular, so they're within easy reach. Um, a dish where I keep uh, sponges and powder puffs, some brushes, in the back, way back here, you'll see um, some lip liners. This next section of my desk has a couple of different sorts of things here. I've got a little lamp, but this right here is my absolutely ridiculously large like container full of unused mascaras. So some of them are still in the box and I had was starting to run out of space here in the box. Um, I started just taking them out of their packaging and leaving them up here on top. I do have some sample sizes in here, but I can't imagine needing to buy mascara for a very, very, very long time, but somehow I always end up with more. They usually come in subscription boxes, but I did pick up this green clump crusher. That was me. This box right here usually lives in that back corner, but I wanted to show you what was in it because these are eyeshadow palettes that I'm trying to make decisions on. Uh, one of them is the Nude Tood, and I, I've always loved the packaging. I think this cardboard packaging with the little naked ladies is super cute, but I'm not sure these colors are still calling my name. We'll see. Um, both of these are brand new. They came in my um, December Boxy Luxe, so I have the HG or the Holy Grail Pro Palette from Violet Voss and the Protégé from Suva Beauty. So those are ones I just want to get acquainted with. And then the rest of the ones that I'm trying to decide about what I'm doing with here, I have the Ablaze Palette. This is the cover shot um, one from Smashbox and this Naked Cosmetics. This came in a BoxyCharm more than a year ago and the colors are beautiful, but I never use them. <laughs> So um, when I was doing a review this last summer of Bad Habit, I used this Athena palette. And you know what? I just realized these colors really weren't like exciting to me. I don't really love things that are quite this warm. So I'm going to double check. I'm also uh, wanting to go through here. If you want to see, I have a whole list of, I'll link it down below, but my video for what's on my chopping block. And then I have three of the Lorac Mega Pros. Um, and I know they didn't put one out this year, which I was like, okay, that's cool, because uh, apparently I'm not using these. Uh, I do love the formula, but I find that this larger size is a little bit more cumbersome. But I'm going to reorganize these, stick those all back there, and we'll talk about what I have next door. What you have here, um, these are my uh, lipsticks that I'm trying to pan this year, or finish up, or make some serious headway on because I can. Um, these guys over here are all the ones that I reach for on the regular. And these are more your traditional bullet lipsticks. I have all of my Charlotte Tilbury's over here. I have a whole bunch of the red velvet or velvet rope and then the silver screen um, lipstick queen ones. I have the YSL Rouge Couture back here. I have some Bobbi Brown, some Dior. Um, and then of course my favorites from the drugstore which happen to be these little ones from Revlon that have um, this cushion on the end. I think these are brilliant. And this shade right here is my favorite. Um, no, 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 no. This one is my favorite. It's the darkest one. This one's called Wine Trip. Beautiful. Love that one. Um, and so, yeah, these are most of my bullet lipsticks. These guys here are kind of like the smaller little sample sizes that came in all of those holiday lip kits. And I thought if I kept them out, I'd be more likely to continue to reach for them. All right. So towards the back here, um, all of these, this section over here, are all of my single shadow and uh, single pan um, face products. All three of these are ColourPop and they're all full of ColourPop shadows, all three of them smack dab to the top. Um, I don't have many singles from Anastasia, but these are the ones that I have. So I've got that quad and then I have this eight pan here. And then the rest of this over here is more uh, face related. So I have the Park Avenue Princess palette, the first Tarte 
clay play, which I really love. My favorite highlighter from ColourPop, which is the In Nudendo. I think this is gorgeous. And then just a few smaller things. Um, I really think that this Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe palette is perfection for highlight at the drugstore. I do have one of the Jouer Duo blushes. This is uh, the shade Adore. I think that's great. And then a highlight from Anastasia Beverly Hills that they don't make anymore. Uh, this one here is so Hollywood and I love this shade. All right, the rest of what I have here, um, I'm just going to move this stuff here so you get a better eyeball of it. Um, what I have over here are kind of the smaller palettes that I reach for on the regular. Um, there are a few things like I have this foolproof brows here. I really like this. Um, I do have my favorite bronzer from Bare Minerals and the Omrizi highlighter. And then this palette, oh my goodness, this palette is one of my favorites. Because if I'm wanting to do a really easy, really fast look, you get a matte and you get a shimmer and it's beautiful. And I especially love this combo here, this one, and this one. I mean, I've used them all, but this one I think is probably my favorite. Um, from here, my favorite color pops. So I have the Dream Street, the Zodiac, Perception, uh, the Fame palette, and then the It's a Princess thing. Um, in the back, I have my Sultry palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Skinny Dip from Jouer. Another one that I should probably put on the other side is this is from Ace Beauty, or Ace Beauty, I don't know how to say that. Um, but this here is the Grandiose palette, and it's got a lot of really warm colors. I think the matte formula is nice, but I really love love the shimmers. Um, and a lot of these shades right in here are a little more on the warm side that I would naturally gravitate towards. So I think I'm gonna plop that over here and then keep using that and see what you think and then make a decision on it. All right, so, boy, I'm taking it all out. I'll have to be organized later. Um, smaller palettes, I was surprised about this one from the Balm. I really didn't think I would like it. I love this palette. It's a super easy, like no thought goes into it, but beautiful look. So this is the Smoke Balm, and I like how it looks like a matchbook with like a little strike area. I think it's great. And I think that for the price, <laughs> which for me was they sent it along free, they were doing a promotion, it was like perfect. And I never thought I would love something so much. I really do like some of these smaller palettes. This is um, the old packaging for the Natasha Denona. This is the five pan, and this is, I think this is number two. Yeah, the number two palette. But these are the ones that have more of those plummy rosy tones. Love this one. Um, I use this Kristen Leanne um, kind of matte neutrals on the regular. Every single shade, beautiful, really, really like it. And then I have um, this one from Too Faced I picked up just before Thanksgiving. This is the, um, what is this one called? The Tickled Peach. And I heard really good reviews about this and I love this palette. I'm really starting to want to reach more for smaller sized palettes. Um, this one from Ciate, this one here is called the Pretty Palette. I don't know if they still sell this one, but I like that you have some very shimmery colors over here, very matte colors over here, something that works perfectly for my brow bone. And with these guys here, I just stick my finger in them. I think they work best that way. This is one of my favorite cover shot palettes from Smashbox. This one is, is this one just called Soft Light? Yeah. Um, I really like it a lot. I know that it, there's not a lot of depth to it, but on a no makeup makeup day, I don't know that you ever do no makeup makeup days, but sometimes I'll just take like one of these, this one or this one or this one, and a light wash over the lid and it's gorgeous. All right, so uh, Pat McGrath, this is the Sublime. This is, I think, second or third of those big palettes. It's the one with the green in it. I also got the, what is this one, Bronze Ambition. I like this one so much. Oh my goodness, love everything about this palette. That one's fairly new. This one's also fairly new. I'm still kind of deciding what I think about it. Although I really think the mattes in here are nice. There is a couple of the shimmers that are pressed too hard. And these glitters, I'm doing my best to wear them without them landing everywhere. My favorite glitter is Diamonds for Breakfast. Um, and I really do like this one here, uh, Fluent in Diamonds. These two are probably not going to wear nearly as much, but I do get a really pretty look from this. It's not the easiest eyeshadow palette, but I make it work. 
So out of all of my Too Faced, these are the two I reach for most often, the Sweet Peach and the Chocolate Gold. And then I forgot how much I love this, and of course it's stuck in the back. It's the In the Balm of Your Hand Volume 2. So um, it has a lot of eyeshadow singles in here. This is also a, the Mary, Lu Mary Luminizer Highlight, and then a Bahama Mama, and then some blushes. I absolutely think this is great. Sometimes if I'm going traveling, I'll take just this because I have blush, I have highlight. I do take a separate bronzer because even though I can use Bahama Mama in the crease of my eye, I cannot use it on my face. It's just too deep. I uh, forgot to show you, I do still have my loaf pan here. I'm keeping <clears throat> all of my project pan things in this container or in this container so I don't get them mixed up. Whoop, bump in the camera. I do occasionally take lipsticks out of here, the little of my purse, but I know which ones they are and they go straight back in here when I'm done. So if I want to get ready in this room, which I always do, I'm able to easily find them. All right, so the last few things, let me show you what I have on the desk. I think that Huggies are a less expensive wipe for removing swatches. I don't use them on my face, only on my hands. Um, I have two more containers full of clean brushes up here. These are the ones that I use as backups for when my favorite ones get dirty and I need to wash them. <laughs> um, all of my brow things are in here. I have way too many. Some are ones that I'm trying to finish. Some are ones that I love and other ones are ones that are in here, but I need to try them again to remember what I think. I do have like this little container over here of um, either things that are nearly finished or that I decided I'm not really using more. Oh, by the way, more brushes. So um, I haven't tried this yet. This is the Cabral from Benefit. Um, there are some pencils in here that I know that I don't like, like these guys and these guys. I don't know what my brow, boy brow is doing down there. But there's that. Um, Q-tips, cotton rounds, uh, lip balm. All of my mascaras that are open right now are down here. I have way too many. Some of them are nearly done. Uh, my lash curler. And then my most used, you know, I can get rid of this. I truly hate this. That's going in the trash. Um, most used uh, liners are there. So that's the last of what's on the desktop. Last thing there is now is just to look in the drawer that comes in this desk. So this section kind of holds more of my most used. This section up front are kind of like my favorite foundations or ones that I find myself reaching for the most. Uh, most used concealers are here. Most used highlights are here. Uh, these are the rest of the concealers that I chose not to declutter. Um, these are my primers. These are the only primers I have. I have a few like samples like here and here, but these are the only full size ones I have. I have some um, powders back here that are pressed. Let's see. So I have a unopened Cover Effects setting powder. I have a cushion foundation. And then the rest of these here are powders. Everything here is blush with the exception of my Take Home the Bronze, which I love. That's really good. And then towards the back here, a new powder that I got in my BoxyCharm for December, which is the Pretty Vulgar Matte. Oh, what's it called? This is the Powder Room Matte About It. Um, some bronzers in through here. Uh, another NARS bronzer here. And then um, some eyeshadow palettes. These are all from Too Faced. So I have the Peanut Butter. I have the Clover the semi-sweet and the original chocolate bar. I'm worried if I bring it out too far, it's all gonna fall out. But I do have more foundations in the back. I did a huge declutter this summer, and these were the ones I felt like I might still reach for, but I'm starting to see that I never opened the drawer that far, and what lives in here is what's my kind of everyday, these are the things that I use sort of liquid foundations. So I should show you down here, this is the kind of like the last of it. If you start over here, this bin here is full of highlights that I'm keeping but aren't like up here. I kind of rotate them through. I have some larger palettes down there, some singles that are favorites. Uh, that's what that bin is. The rest of these bins are things to get rid of. So in the very, very far back, this plastic bin here is a mixture of powder, highlight, blush, bronzer, you know, things that I know I'm not going to use, as is this kind of long, narrow box here. This red one here is full of lipsticks and little Ziploc bags, and uh, this tall guy right here is 
full of my chopping block eyeshadows that aren't making it off the chopping block. They're going to go in there. I'll do a video, wrap it up, and uh, there's that. So thank you so much for watching today. I, I hope, if nothing else, you kind of get into the mind of somebody who loves makeup way too much and has way too much of it, but is trying to keep a firm grip on it. I have decluttered at least three times this amount already. People have come through. I used to have like the whole floor under here was full. So I have friends who come by or um, kids from my girls' school, they'll come and they'll pick some things up. And if I don't think it's worth, you know, letting somebody try and rehome it, I, I will throw it away. There are some things that just get tossed. But these are all the things that I find that I'm not using and I'll let somebody paw through later. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll uh, subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you again soon. Bye.